God. So you've got two players in your tier number one of immediate impact. Number two, you've already hinted at it. You've alluded to it. Your number two edge rusher who uh, you watch the tape of this guy and you're like, well, that stands out. Competition, you might have to question a little bit, but it definitely stands out. Your number two edge rusher is... Leatu Latu. Yes. Leatu Latu. Leatu right? Latu. Leatu Latu. Right. Gosh, I just, it's amazing how I feel like I say it good and then I get on here with the microphone in my face and I just choke. It's like the death. pressure of having to do it fast because you don't want to do it too slow. Leatu Latu. Yes, Latu. That's what I feel like I'm just going to have to, get the old <laughs> Latu. That's what I'm going to talk about. Okay. Um, wow, do I like him, right? He is a lot of fun to watch. He's different a little bit than Dallas Turner. Like Dallas Turner, right, it's, 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 it pops off the screen, one, of just how naturally athletic he is. Right away, you just go, ooh, whoa, whoa, 15 with the gold helmet on looks a little different than the other guys out here. Just the way he's built, the way he moves, right? He's extre- extremely flexible, pliable, bendable. He's twitchy as hell, right? You know, his arm length is 32 fives and eighths, but I look at it and go, mm. damn, I don't, his arms look long as hell on film. Now, maybe it's the total wingspan that needs to be taken into advantage with Latu. Maybe the, the shoulders and the broadness of the shoulders make it look a little different that way. He pops his arms out of socket I and mean, gives him two extra I, inches I when he needs it most. I don't know what it is, but he was, I mean, <laughs> he's arguably as good as anybody I've seen in this draft as far as getting off blocks, snatching def- uh, uh, blockers out of the way to go make the tackle or do anything like that, right? It's, it's like I said a little bit about Dallas Turner, it's an easy 259, 260 pounds, right? I met him in person. It's big, square, easy, naturally big person. If he wanted to be 270 in a month, he could probably do it easily, right? But he's going around being a great athlete. Look at that. Great legs, just like Dallas Turner, right? And right away, you know, the biggest thing is you just see an elite athlete as soon as you turn on the film, right? The great feet, the great side-to-side movement, whether it's, hey, they they faked a run down the middle and now the quarterback's keeping it on the edge and he kind of shuffles down with the running back and then runs down the quarterback on the edge, right? Or, hey, just the running back making a move and all that. He's incredibly bendable and awesome in space that way, right? The change of direction is off the charts good. The upper body strength and the hands and all of that, right? I mean, he, he's as good as anybody there is, let alone doing it. Great eyes in the backfield to do it. Knows where the ball carrier is at all times. Got a real nose for the football that way. Extremely, extremely strong at what I call, you know, what we in the scouting community, point of attack, right? Tight ends, forget about it. He's going to embarrass them. You know, tackles, he does more than hold his own. He can hold his own and he can move them around a little bit as well, right? He's phenomenal versus the run. You know, he really is. I mean, that's that's where you, you first watch it and just go, wow. I, I know I'm supposed to be watching a pass rusher, but this guy disrupts and affects the whole game as you watch it with the, what he does in the run game as well. That's where he's right. awesome. So really impressed by the specimen, the player, the instincts, everything about him. I mean, there's so much to his story, too, that you got a little oh bit with gosh. your interview with right. him, too. Started at Washington yep. and then was medically retired with a neck injury. It was a neck injury, right? Um, it was. It was cleared a neck by, injury, right. Cleared by doctors at UCLA and then went on to dominate, had 13 sacks, leading the Pac-12 last year, was UCLA's first ever winner of both the Lombardi Award and the Ted Hendricks Award as the nation's top DE, D-end and defensive lineman. So, like, his production is off the charts. And you look at his tape, you're right. You look at his tape, and he's like, no tight end has any chance of stopping him. And most tackles don't either. You do wonder a little bit about the Pac-12 and, and that yeah, whole situation. Sure, right. Um, but uh, Saturna Vine, and this will be the big question with him because his tape is awesome. Saturna Vine says, how much should Latu's medical factor into his evaluation, even though he played at UCLA for two years, played a lot. In my opinion, he has some of the best tape hands, maneuvers to generate uh, pressures constant, uh, consistently. Love the pod. Always good to hear your analysis. I, I mean, I think you said it right. All those things, I'm, I'm exactly, you're exactly right. That's what I, I, uh, I see too, right? I, I mean, it's hard for me not to look at him first off. Like, you don't see any signs – if you're just watching of him going, oh, he's not physical, he's afraid, he's protecting this. There's a few plays where I go, ooh, he could have maybe stuck his face or head in there a little bit, right? 
And I think maybe he just goes, puts his chest in or whatever. And I go, oh, that's probably just because he's a little wary of his neck and doesn't want to, you know, mess with that, which I understand, hmm. right? His story is a lot like the Jalen Phillips who got drafted, you know, was at UCLA and went to Miami. He's got the vice versa story here, right? J- Jalen, Jalen Phillips when at UCLA, had a concussion issue. They told him not to play football anymore. He transferred to Miami. They let him play, and then, boom, he's a first-round pick, right? And he's thriving. He got hurt last year. He hurt his ACL. I know that. But Jalen Phillips is, for my money, I mean, you know, you heard me say this the first part of last year. He's one of the best pass rushers in football, right? I, I think Latu Latu can be just like that. You know, that that's where I look at it. And I wouldn't be totally – I wouldn't be concerned – you know, with the neck thing. I don't, I don't see anything from the last two years, and I didn't dive deep into last year. I just watched a little to kind of go, oh, okay, he was good last year too, right? Like, like, I don't see anything that would hold you back that way. Now, again, I'm not doing x-rays or know anything about ligaments yeah. in the neck and all of that. But It just could be one of those yeah, things, right, right. Where, where a team goes, instead of eight, ah, I'm not super comfortable with I, missing I think, on eight. I think that's what happened to Jalen Phillips. You go 20 yes. or something like that. Like, that's right, what if I we think miss happen, here, if right. he gets hurt, I'm right. okay with that. Right. Um, we have some video of his pro day, too, yeah. so maybe we can scout this. Uh, and I think the other question with him, the medical thing, uh, whatever's happening there, uh, hopefully he's healthy and he, he's back, his power, yeah. right? What, how, how much strength does he have? Yeah, I, well, and I think, like, again, I think you answered that already, right? I mean, you answered it. Again, this is where we don't dive too deep into this. Mm. Like, the power, you saw him manhandle, like, every tackle he played against, right? Especially in the run game. Right. And and especially tight ends. I mean, that, that's what I'm big into. If you're going to be an elite edge guy. Right. Tight ends don't be blocking you. When I, no start to, when I start to see a tight end like consistently beating you. Right. I know there's going to be the Dallas Turner versus Loveland and Michigan. Right. And let, let's not forget, like the guy you're talking about, a tight end Loveland's probably going to be a first round pick. He next probably year. So he's be, he's yes. really damn good. Right. Yes. So but 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 yeah, you know, I, I have no problems with the power. Here's, I think his speed to power is very good. I think he's got good bend, right? It's good get off. I'm not going to say it's wow get off. It's real good get off, right? He's got incredible quicks, like your man Aiden Hutchinson, too. He can win with quicks to power sometimes, right? Because it's not a real phrase. Mm. I've kind of invented that one, but he can kind of get you because he's so quick side to side. He can get tackles a little bit like, oh, is he going to go inside? Is he going to go outside? And then he kind of hits them right in the chest and all of a sudden they're going on a ride, right? You know, so he's got that a little bit. Now, what I wish I would have saw, and I think what he doesn't do enough is like he has good bend. It's not Dallas Turner bend, but it's still damn good. And you see a few where I go, oh, shit, that was incredible right there. So it makes me believe there's more there to be untapped, right? But I wish he used his speed rush more. That was, that was to me, you know, the one thing I wish, I just wish, I wish there was more, just, he just trusted his more explosive speed rush from time to time. I feel like he was always trying to look to make a move at times where I want to go, uh, I, I think you guy can beat this guy around the edge. Yeah. Knows how to use his hands a little bit, but not so much to where I'm like, oh, God, the guy's like a fifth-year veteran already, right? It's just like the basic moves of use, using your hands, right? And like you know, slapping the offensive Slapping the hands, hands is going around away. the yeah. edge or the, you know, slapping, you know, rip underneath, all that. He's got the, 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 you know, the grade school basics there as far as that's concerned. But I like that. Right. Phenomenal player all around, you know, definite top 20 pick, in my opinion. I mean, if he falls outside of the top 20, it's just because of what you said. People are like, ah, I don't want to take him at 12 because of the neck thing. I'd feel better if it was at 25. Right. Mm-hmm. Or something like that. Um, you know, and, and just it, there's really nothing to not like about him. Uh, you know, I think the only thing I, t- I talk about really is just the. I wish there was a few more snaps of just raw explosiveness come around the corner and win with the bend that way. But top 20 pick, and I said Jalen Phillips, and that's who he really reminds me of. If you want to fall in love with him, yeah. just watch the USC tape. Oh because my I feel like he may have beaten every single one of the USC offensive linemen, left, right, in the middle. <laughs> everywhere. Just everywhere. Yeah, and you know that's, that's what he can do, too. Like, he's a – you know, it's third and four – you can move him inside, and he will be a pain in the ass for guards. And let alone, even if a team tries to run the ball, he's because of what you, we talked about already. He's not going to get blown out of the water there by the the run game or anything like that. Uh, he's great, and I'm big into this too. Of this is when I say flexible, pliable, fluid. Right? You've seen those words in my notes sometimes. Right? I'm big into like. 
you're not going to be just up here in a perfect position all game long, right? I mean, every now and then, like, Zach Martin's going to pull and he's going to hit you and you're going to be like, oh, I'm bent like this, right? What do you do when you're like that, right? You know, the fourth and fifth rounders crumble and go to the ground. The first rounders go, ah, oh, I'm okay, and they overcome it and they still get off it and make a tackle, right? That's, that's, that's what I mean by that. Being in, oh, this guy made me move and I got a guy here and I'm, now I'm stuck in this position, but I hopped off of him and I still made the shuffle to my right to make the tackle, right? Where, you know, we'll talk about a guy in a little bit here that's a little bit more stiff where he gets in those positions and he goes down or it's just over, like the play's over a little bit. He's not going to recover that way. That, to me, is one thing that Dallas Turner and Latu were really good at mm. is being put in those awkward, in-the-scrum positions and then still being able to redirect, shuffle, change directions, throw somebody off them while they're like in a weird yoga pose, right, and then still go, oh, get off me. I'm going to make the tackle anyways. They were really good in that department. And that, to me, goes into the, the bendable, flexible, pliable thing that you try to piece together to go, ooh, this guy can do this as a pass rusher and do all that stuff. So two guys, immediate impact, off the edge, the second of which, who the medical concerns are real, should fall to number 29 to my Detroit Lions <laughs> yeah, to right. pair up with Aiden Hutchinson and really wreck offenses next year in the NFL. Yo, yo, homies, what's up? I know it's the offseason, but it's never the offseason on Christmas. Chris Sims unbutton. Me and Ahmed Farid are going to be here for it all. You know we got free agency. We're going to break it all down. The draft, the rankings of positions. Of course, we're going to unpack it all. Hit subscribe. Get to my free agency reactions, 2024 draft rankings and more. Thanks again for watching. Peace out, homies. See you soon.